Hey, welcome back to the shop. Um, we are still working on the um, small sign bars and you saw me just roughing down the excess material from the saw cut when we sliced up the profile into single individual um, sign bars. And now I changed the end mill or the, the shell mill to a brand new reground shell end mill. And we're going to finish cut it. At first I wanted to side mill all the, the surfaces, all the faces, um, this and this face, but um, yeah, I decided to give it a nice, uh, the side is already finished, um, a nice uh, fine milled surface, face milled. So let's drop it in the vise. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this already. If you have um, one of these grinding vices, the single most useful thing you could get or should get is a T-handled Allen wrench to to tighten down. And when you're working with small parts, this gives also a nice plastic hammer to tap down your part on the parallels. But as this is a more massive work piece, I'm using a copper drift. And by the sound, I can tell if I'm firmly against the parallels. I have the, the machine run at 500 RPM. And that's a bit high for this uh, 40 millimeter shell end mill, but we're taking only a 500th of a millimeter cut. That's a very light cut and we don't produce a lot of heat and um, we should be fine and it leaves a, a great finish. Okay, the sun bar gets a single 7mm hole in the center, so I can um, screw it against an angle plate or a setup block or something like that to, to make for a rigid setup, so it doesn't move around. And um, I don't even bother with center drilling or um, yeah, nothing. I, I'm using a stop length drill, choked up in a collet and we're drilling straight through. 560 RPM and some cutting oil. There we go. And I set up my stop and a leaf spring between the parallels, so setup time is very low. Just clean up the dirt. If you're that far in in a project, you really want to make sure you have no dirt on your vice jaws, otherwise you would press in the dirt into your finished surface. And that really sucks, so be careful. Okay, our sign bars need of course a 45 degree um, threaded hole in this corner so we can um, screw in our rollers and 
how do how do you set it up? You could do it on the wise with a 45 degree um, angle piece, but that would be fine for one. But I have to do six, and it's uh, two threaded holes, so uh, 12. Yeah, uh, quite a lot of setup, um, and I came up with in my mind the better setup. I have a one, two, three block, which is uh, shop made or yeah I made it when I had access to a surface grinder um, which has six millimeter threaded holes it's square all over ground and blah 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 it's quite nice uh, I bolted it to the table and I set up a 45 uh, 90 degree V block in front of it clamped it to the table so it doesn't move and now I can just drop my part into the V and push it up against the angle block or the, the setup block and take a single 6mm nut and clamp it in place and that's my setup now I can uh, locate this position up here and uh, yeah drill and tap it and maybe we can even do the lower one in the same setup but it might be a bit uh, yeah <laughs> uh, we might get in clearance issues with the block here. Maybe we have to uh, re redo the setup. But we will see. Okay. okay, that's good enough. Another drill, 2.5 millimeter for a three millimeter thread. I set the depth. I set the depth stop of my mill so we don't break through on the other side. And for tapping, I'm not going to power thread this. This is too dangerous for my mind, or at least for such a small run. I could set the um, the auto stop on the milling machine to do the rigid tapping, but I'm not going to do it. We're going to hand tap it. I just clamped the tap in a tap handle on the shank, and I'm using the the chuck as a tap follower. I lock the quill and then I loosen the chuck so I can freely rotate the tap with the handle but um, still have enough guidance to get the tap straight in. Some cutting oil and off we go. And this is a spiral flute machine tap. Um, so we don't have to break the chip. As you can see it pulls out the chip quite nicely out of the hole. In fact when you break the chip with one of these taps during tapping it can cause problems. It can um, catch or um, uh, jam up the tap in the, in the hole and you might end up with a broken a broken uh, tap. There we go. Back it off. Uh, we don't need a whole lot of thread in there. Um, one times diameter deep is in steel good enough. Okay, there we go. One done. Five to go. Okay, to drill the lower um, mounting hole, I had to move the hole set up by one uh, hole um, distance. First, I used the right right row of holes. Now I'm using the left row of holes, and also I have to use the ER11 extension uh, chuck in a ER, in a big. ER25 collet chuck uh, to get enough clearance down here for the uh, for the clamping nut. So let's change parts. 
I already did five. Now I'm doing the last one. And I switched on the air compressor to have some compressed air. It's nice to be able to clean out um, setups with air if you do it with uh, some uh, yeah uh, if you don't if you aren't an idiot when you use the compressed air uh, don't don't aim the compressed air at um, bearing shields or directly at slideways or stuff like that don't blow chips over to the next machine where a guy is working yeah just uh, yeah common sense when using compressed air and don't uh, run it at six bar or some psi um, a little bit of air is most of the time enough to get a, <clears throat> a setup clean so that's drill and i found out that i don't really need to center drill the the drill finds its uh, spot very well And it's a good idea to use a rack behind the part when you blow away chips and oil. Just to catch most of it. Um, yes, I don't do it at work because I work on a fully enclosed CNC machine and I only can blow the chips against the guards in the machine. Um, of course, I also don't direct the air against the high-speed spindle in the machine because it's uh, it has only labyrinth seals but again common sense and in the home shop by holding a, a rag or your hand which is bad practice of course behind the air gun keeps the yeah <laughs> the mess down to a minimum Okay, now for tapping. I decided to power tap them, because why not? It's a 3mm thread, that's fine to power thread, even if it's blind hole. I set the dial indicator on the depth stop so I know when I have to shut off the machine and then I'm hand cranking it until we reach the lower end. Some cutting oil. There we go. Now we can disengage the gears and Okay, that's it. That's way nicer than hand tapping. I <laughs> uh, should have done it on the up, on the other holes too. Okay, I prepared blanks for the rollers of the sign bars. Uh, this is 10 mm drill rod and each of these blanks will give me two rollers. I will um, and I still need to drill and counterbore them. Then I'm going to harden them as one piece. And then I'm going to grind grind the outer diameter so they are nice and round and true on the lathe with the tool post grinder and then we're going to cut off this um, the roller from the remaining stock with yeah maybe we just break it off and clean up the broken surface or we use a small cutoff disc or no nah, we will see and then we're done then we can screw the roller into the sign bar like this and like this and we're good to go so we're over at the milling machine and we're drilling the stepped hole in the rollers um, hope you can see this I'm doing a um, a deep 45, 45 degree counter bore countersink and drill it through with a 3.1 millimeter 
a drill for clearance, screw clearance. And to speed things up, I use a starter drill that I ground down to 4.3 millimeters and which has a 90 degree point to give me the counter bore to the right depth and the right diameter and then I follow up with a uh, regular twist drill to drill the clearance hole for the screw. Uh, and the setup is simple, I'm using the V in the vise as this is just a screw clearance hole. I'm using the V, I push part in from the side against the stop, clamp it, then I have my starter drill which I ground down on the tool grinder and I set my depth stop on the mill to the right amount. When I butt up the tool against the backstop in the drill chuck. Okay, counter board, counter, counter sunk, and now we drill through with a 3.1 millimeter drill. There we go. Okay, here you can see a pair of rollers with the counterboard hole and this is the screw where I turned down the head to 4 millimeters. And as you can see this goes below the surface and looks quite neat. Um, it doesn't build up, it doesn't need a, a big old counterboard like a, a cap screw or a yeah, a standard, a regular screw. So that's the reason why I modify the screws. And the main reason why I do this is so I get as much material left and right of the screw hole uh, as possible. And I think that's the best solution. I didn't want to drill through from the other side of the sign bar into the rollers because I wanted the top surface of the sign bar to be without any holes. Okay, we're going to harden these. Um, I'm not going to fire up the oven for these six little buggers. I'm just using the oxy fuel torch. Okay. And we're just quenching them in vegetable oil. And last one. There we go. Okay, we're over at the lathe and we're grinding the rollers for the sign bar. And my setup is the following. I have my magnetic chuck on the spindle and I clamped a V-block to the um, to the magnetic chuck, or in fact it's stuck on there. <coughs> I set up my tool post grinder and I'm running a cubic boric nitrike, a CBN grinding wheel, because 
You don't have to dress them, which uh, makes for very little dirt. They look like a diamond wheel, but it's not diamond, it's cubic boric nitride, which works for hardened steel. You should not grind soft steel with those wheels because it will break down very fast. In fact, you can dress this wheel with soft steel. Um, if it's running out slightly, you can grind a piece of soft steel for some time and then you have you dress the wheel. So normally you would only grind hardened steel with it. Not carbide. Carbide would also ruin the, the grinding wheel. <coughs> and I'm not using a normal aluminum oxide grinding wheel because of the dirt that would be caused from dressing with a diamond. Grinding is messy enough anyway, so I don't have to do any um, yeah, dressing. And as this is a cup wheel, I offset the the toolpuff grinder in that direction, so I'm grinding, I'm running along the the, fa the the side surface of the wheel, the circumflex. Uh, let's take one of the hardened roller pairs. We set it up in the V block. Just clamp it in there. And then we check for run out because I'm shooting for 9.8 millimeter. Um, starting diameter is 10 millimeters, so I have uh, 0.2 millimeters on there. And if there is much run out, the surface might not clean up completely. Okay. Yeah, we got. Uh, Pretty much, pretty exactly 0.2 millimeters of run out. Now I'm just taking a copper drift. I look for the high spot, which is here, and I tap it. Okay, almost zero run out. Okay, lathe is running at about. Uh, 200 RPM and two bolt grinder is going. I'm taking cuts of about uh, 0.02 to 0.05 millimeters. Safety glasses. First cut. Okay, I'm pretty much down to size, now we can check the diameter. And it seems like the batteries of my digital mics is getting empty. And we are at 9.85, so we have five hundredths of a millimeter to go. Okay, now we should be at two hundredths of a millimeter remaining stock. This is just a quick idiot check. 
yeah, 9.822, so two hundreds to go. <clears throat> okay, we should be on diameter. Nine point eight oh five. That's five thousandths of a millimeter oversize, and now we're going to hit it with some three M um, super finishing fill. Just because we can. Shouldn't have removed much material. Eight o three, eight o four, looking good. Now we can take the part, flip it around, and grind the other side. And they, of course, they don't need to run true to each other, um, as we will cut them off here later. The only thing, when I reclamp it on the other side, I like to put a piece of brass between so the clamping screw doesn't hit directly on my fresh Lucran surface. Just snug it up. Okay, the safety guys will love this setup. Um, I'm going to cut off the rollers from the remaining stock here and I'm using a one millimeter cutoff disc in the tool post grinder <laughs> and as I didn't have washers, ground washers with a 13 millimeter bore I just stacked up two additional smaller cutting discs behind my big cutting disc. Um, we're running the lathe at about 200 rpm and the tool post grinder at some rpm. And if you're not sure about the setup and you uh, think that it might send shrapnel into your face, don't do it. That's common sense. So let's line it up. There we go. We have clearance everywhere. Good to go. There we go, nobody died, perfect safe. Okay, I finished all the grinding on the rollers of the sign bars, as you can see, and I test fitted them all together. Um, the screws I'm using are four millimeter countersunk screws which uh, which said I turned down to four millimeter um, so I end up with this very small countersunk hole in the rollers and as you can see they look quite good I'm very happy how they came out next step will be to set them up on the shaper to level them out and do a finishing cut on the surface up here. 